Hey guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about why the 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2015 is the best budget MacBook you can get right now. And I say budget because it's cheaper than Apple's current lineup. And in terms of bang for your buck, I think it's the perfect MacBook to get. Like always, there will be timestamps in the description of this video so that you could jump around to whatever part of this video you would like to see. So first, the build and the body. Now, this MacBook comes in at 3.48 pounds, which is not the lightest, especially compared to some of Apple's newer laptops. However, it is definitely not uncomfortable. It can be lifted with one hand, carried around easily, and comfortable wherever you have it. I really like the build of this laptop because even though it is five years old, by no means does this laptop look outdated. It is built out of premium aluminum. However, because Apple doesn't actually sell this anymore, you're gonna have to buy this refurbished or from a third party seller, which means that it could sometimes get minor dents or scratches like the ones that mine has. However, on the day to day, it survives all the regular school related tasks that I do and the build and body will definitely not disappoint you. The model that I have is the 13 inch version, which means that it's small enough to be completely portable and it's even comfortable to have on a desk alongside any work that you might have. Continuing on, I have a 13.3 inch beautiful retina display. It is bright and accurate, can display 4K video even on YouTube, and it's perfect for anybody doing regular tasks without question because the pictures and the videos will just be so clear. Something that does bother me is that it does get dirty quite easily and will have to be cleaned often. However, with the quality that this screen, I don't even mind that. It is beautiful to look at. It can also be opened single-handed, which again just makes it feel really premium. Next up, the keyboard, which is arguably the most important part of a laptop. As Apple has been trying to recover after the, well, failure that was the butterfly switch mechanism, this laptop is one of the last laptops that actually still had the chiclet style keyboard meaning that it had excellent travel, was large and comfortable to use without being mushy, and felt great to type on. The keys themselves were backlit and that could be controlled on the function row. Overall, an excellent keyboard that won't disappoint. Now, if you're a student, something that may be important is actually port selection. This laptop is again one of the last laptops that had a large range of ports that were still useful, I find, even in 2020. Apple has been pushing for USB-C and the fact of the matter is that not everybody is on full USB-C yet. There are still people that need to use headphone jacks, there are still people that need to use SD card slots, and this laptop definitely has you covered in all those territories. You've got MagSafe, two Thunderbolt 2 connectors, two USB ports, a headphone jack, an HDMI port, and even an SD card reader. The port selection is vast and you won't be disappointed. Next up, the trackpad. Now, as everybody knows, Apple has had a reputation for having the best trackpads in the game, and this laptop stays true to that. This laptop has the force touch trackpad, meaning that it's smooth and quick, can be clicked anywhere on the trackpad itself, is very customizable, and has numerous gestures that come in very handy for the user to use. And this is what the built-in webcam and the built-in microphone in the laptop itself sounds like. So you can decide for yourself whether or not you think that this is great or if this is suboptimal. In my opinion, it's just not the best, even in 2020. Now, like I mentioned before, Apple doesn't sell this laptop anymore, which means that the battery could be a hit or miss. The battery that my model has can last me around eight hours, which isn't necessarily the longest, but will get me through an average workday. You will probably have to change it in the future as expected with older products. However, this brings up one of the great features of this laptop and the fact that the internals are still customizable at this point. Once this battery can no longer be of service, you can easily pick up a new battery and just install it into your MacBook. This just means that if the battery is starting to wear down and isn't performing how it should, you can easily change it out and you don't need to spend money on a new laptop, which is a really good feature. And speaking of being able to switch things out, this brings me to the RAM. The RAM that I have on this laptop is eight gigabytes. However, it is upgradable up to 16 gigabytes. Next up, the storage. The model that I have has 250 gigabytes of storage. And I find that that is the perfect amount as there are many cloud-based storages that are available for us to use. These storages take up a lot of the storage that may otherwise fill up the local storage that is on your laptop. 
and you can only really feel the space and capacity of the storage if you are playing games, editing video, or anything related to that. The CPU that my laptop has is the 2.7 GHz dual core Intel Core i5, and really this CPU is fast and reliable for everything that the average student may be doing, and only slows down when you're playing games, editing, and exporting, etc., just like the other things that could slow this laptop down. The graphics that came with my laptop is the Intel Iris Graphics 6100, and honestly these graphics are good for everyday regular tasks, it's very smooth, very fast, but as soon as you start gaming, it's pretty much unplayable. Even on games like Fortnite, don't be expecting to be gaming, it's just simply not able to run that. However, on other regular tasks, it runs completely fine and it's smooth. Sorry gamers. In terms of the software, I'm running macOS Catalina and it's running it easily. It's snappy, fluid, and perfect for what I do. And the great thing about the laptop that I have right now is that I know it will last future software updates because Apple optimizes for older devices to receive updates, which is another good reason to buy an older laptop because Apple just continually optimizes for their older devices to get these updates and still be snappy, fluid, and fast. Now, in terms of the price, it is priced very well compared to other MacBook Pros. For example, the 13-inch MacBook Pro right now costs upwards of $1,700. So compared to some of the laptops that Apple has right now, it is priced very well, especially because it can be found for under $1,000 Canadian with the specs that I believe are acceptable for students comfortably. These specs are perfect for what students and even casual users would be doing and it's perfectly fast and reliable. It maintains a slim body with great I.O. The internals are even capable of editing with Final Cut Pro X smoothly, however, Again, gaming is just not going to be an option with this laptop. This laptop is also not going to break the bank to get into an ecosystem at which I think is a fair price. For everything that I've been doing, for the time that I've been using it for school and for personal projects, it has been worth the investment. And I think it would really be worth the investment for you too if you are looking for a MacBook and you don't want to dish out upwards of $1,600 for a Pro, you don't want the outdated white bezels, and you don't want to lose all of your ports. With all those different things to consider, this laptop is definitely worth checking out, as it could provide you a lot of value. And just like the MacBook Pro 2015 could provide you a lot of value, if this video has provided you any value, it would really help my channel if you left a like and even subscribed if you want more videos just like this one. More videos are on the way, so hit the bell icon if you don't want to miss them. I'm Matt, and thanks for watching.